Hello, 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 guys. Welcome to another episode of Scrotitis Plays Feed the Beast. How you guys doing today? We have been busy here in our base. Let's go over a couple of the changes before we get into today's major project. Uh, where should we start? Where should we start? I think we'll start up on the next floor here with one pretty major addition which is that of the industrial electrolyzer okay guys now I built this it took a good bit of resources and it takes a lot of power uh, we have uh, an MFE dedicated just to that piece of machinery because it takes that much power uh, is this, does it say it on here no it doesn't I think it's 128 ticks per packet or 128 EU per tick, I think is what it takes, and that's exactly what an MFE outputs. So I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong on that one, but uh, we went ahead and built that. I had to have a dedicated MFE set up for it. reason we made it is because we were, uh, we were turning bauxite dust and empty cells into aluminum dust, tiny piles of titanium dust, which that's pretty awesome, Hydrogen cells and compressed air cells. Now these two I'm not real sure what I'm going to be doing with, if anything, for the time being. Um, titanium could come in use in the future, but the main reason I was doing this is for the aluminum dust, okay? And uh, what I needed that for we will see shortly, but aluminum dust we need to turn into aluminum bars, that or ingots. That can only be done in a blast furnace. So that led us to our next change, which was da -da, the addition of a blast furnace. And as you can see, we've got some aluminum ingot in there with some aluminum dust. Uh, we were just using regular charcoal, which was cooking logs in our, our ovens to make charcoal. But uh, you can also have a Railcraft uh, Coke stove, and that makes a more, more potent... Uh, charcoal which uh, we may be getting into it in a couple episodes some real craft stuff but that's not the whole big deal the reason that we did all of this work for aluminum is so we can go back to one of my favorite power units which is the water mill and thanks to trusty Greg tech oop, and water mill Thanks to Greg Tech, they changed this design from wood uh, sticks and planks to aluminum ingots. So we needed to uh, we needed to get our aluminum on, and we did that. But what did we do it for? We needed a power source for our newly designed bee house, guys. And that's what we're doing this episode is talking up our new bee house. So let's go in and take a look. We did the work. Uh, last episode, I believe, on automating these bad boys. And uh, actually, this one is so far to bursting that we sometimes pop out extra ones. Uh, so we've gone ahead and we've automated all of these now. They're all connected except for these three. This one doesn't have a queen. Uh, and these two I'm still trying to work out. Oh, I would love to have this one be rusty. Do I have... I do have a rusty drone. Let's see. I've been trying to get these dang resilient drones out of here and make this a rusty, uh, an iron-producing apiary. This one... Oh, this one's rusty, too. This one we'll just have to do resilience, I guess. All right, so that's that, that's that, and this one needs it. Now, around these, just a quick recap, we have corroded, which is our copper. We've got a bauxite one. In case we need more aluminum, I figured that might come in handy. So we have a bauxite one going. We have two tarnished ones going. And this is our charmed one for our otherworldly. Now, I'd like to have, ideally, another corroded, another, or and maybe two rusty for some iron. And I just realized I don't have a window here. We need to get some more glass for that. Uh, but yeah, how do you get? What do you guys think of our new layout here? Let's check it out from up above. First of all, it's two stories. Uh, I was looking at the old design and I absolutely hated it. So I thought we'd do a little two-tier action, keeping the same hexagon shape, which is similar to a honeycomb. Uh, or one piece of a honeycomb. But we're going to have some moving parts in here now. We're going to take this automation a step further. So let's uh, let's talk to what we've expanded on 
from the last episode, okay? So we've got this sort of streamlined feel where they either recycle back in or shoot out the combs and excess bees, and they all funnel over into this uh, tube right here, okay? So then that one goes down and hits this apiary pipe, or apiarist pipe. I always click on these pipes <laughs> with other pipes in my hand. So then we filter items up white and any bees down gold. So any bees go this way and everything else goes up here. So what I would like to eventually have is a whole wall or semi-circle wall of these um, bee chest. But as for the time being, we just have five. And this is like our very lowest, which is like forest, meadows, common, rocky. And then this goes to the next phase of bees, which is your majestic, noble, valiant, and cultivated. Maybe ancient are in here as well. And then here are the resilient, diligent, tolerant, and hardy, which is everything we've been using to make the bees that we want. Uh, our... our uh, metal or iron, not iron, but metal producing or ingot producing bees. And then this very last one are the actual bees that we've been using. Lots of bauxite ones. And then we have one corroded drone and a couple tarnished drones. And then we have to turn this queen and princess into one of these, hopefully. But that's going to take some work. i got to go find a humid place where these will actually work. And we have a catch-all line at the end, okay? Each one of these apiaris pipes are set up with what's corresponding with red and then passing the rest on down the line. And you'll see as we go down what we've got, what we already talked about separation-wise. So that is that setup, and it's working pretty well so far. Um, it would work a little bit better if we had these guys hooked up as they're still trying to find themselves. But for the time being, I think we're going to leave it as is. Okay, that's going to take us to our second part, the more important part of this, which is the processing of the bee automation, okay? Now, what we've got going on is we need to make some water mills, and like I said, we made a ton of aluminum. Uh, and I actually miscalculated. I forgot that these produce two. So let's go ahead and do it like this, and we should have ten. Water mills, just like that, guys. Perfect. Let's go ahead and throw these guys back in there. We're not going to need them. So uh, next is our power source, right? I decided to go with water mills because they're a constant source of power. They don't generate a lot of power, but they constantly are are gaining. They're better than so well, not better than like hybrid solar panels, because they never stop. But uh, in, in, ter in forms of constant energy, water mills are pr as pretty close as, in my mind, that you can get. Plus, if you guys watch my Tekkit series, I have uh, a small, slight effectuation for water mills. But uh, let's go ahead and check out the setup that we have going down here for them. I went ahead and threw this together off camera as well. This is our uh, low voltage cable, and this is uh, all that's needed for the amount of uh, EU that's put out by an individual water mill. Two rows of five or ten water mills then run into a battery box that we have copper cable running up to another battery box. Uh, eventually, if we want, we could replace all of these copper cables with battery boxes, just bup, 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 bup. They have a nice little supply of energy uh, if it ever gets to the point where it gets to build up. But let's go ahead and place these. I've got dirt blocks in place because you need to place them down on a block. And let's then knock out that dirt block to reveal our lights underneath, which I think this is kind of a cool looking effect. Uh, let's double check that it's working real quick. Battery box is slowly gaining power. And when it gets to 32, back down to zero because that 32 went up there. So let's go ahead and place the rest of these real quick. And I'll show you the uh, lighting bit underneath then. This uh, then ensures that we have three, um, or all sides are surrounded by water sources. With the changes in 1.47 with water sources, uh, when you break a water block underneath, they do, in fact, uh, regenerate as source blocks now. So that's kind of nice. But there we go. 
that's our water mill section, and we should be getting some nice generation from that. It's soon to be nighttime, and as you can see, guys, our power is going to constantly be running. And up here, if we take a peek, we're building up power up there as well. So, uh, real quick, I just want to show you what I did down here. Nothing too special. But we dug out this area and we've got our lights with just some redstone torches underneath. These lights were actually donated as part of the got milk sign on the server. So uh, thanks guys. I found a good use for the lights. Cool little effect that we got going on underneath our water mills. And let's go ahead and check it out over here. I think it looks pretty cool. Little lighted resource. So what do we need this power for? We are going to be using this to uh, this EU power source with some electrical engines so that we can then in turn you see we got this this is the second battery box here we got copper cabling going to two electric engines we can eventually um, if we don't have enough power which I'm not certain we may not uh, we can expand this then by making some more and just making a little little array of electrical engines uh, I did not check but they should turn on both should turn on with this switch without problem so let's go up here and talk about what happens from our bees that are sorted up so the next thing that we have going on is we have a diamond pipe here or these I'm sorry these aren't the bees the bees go that way we have a diamond pipe here set to separate the combs that we are specifically breeding okay uh, what happens is some of these guys they're not perfectly bred so they still produce rocky combs sometimes or stringy combs you see there's an iron comb and a stringy comb so obviously we don't want the stringy comb in our production line or these rocky combs we don't want we don't want that messing with our production line so we've gone ahead and set up a distinction so that everything that comes through white is either a bauxite, tin, copper, or otherworldly. We actually need to add, well, actually for the time being, hopefully we can add an iron comb to that, but we don't know if we'll be able to or not. Is there a whole bunch of endermen over here? Check that out, guys. That's pretty crazy. A gaggle of endermen. I've never seen more than one uh, standing together. That's pretty crazy. We should go dump a bucket of water on them. <laughs> uh, I don't feel like dying. <laughs> anyway, let's get back down here. Um, yeah, so we have our diamond pipe, and that's splitting off the combs that we want into this relay. The reason I decided to go with the relay is because then that will allow even distribution of those combs into one of two centrifuges that we have powered. Uh, if one is full, then it will pass to the other. If both are full, then it will simply hold the items. This little red light will come on right here. And um, it will hold the items till there's a free space, and then it will come out. So the next thing that I forgot we want to put on here, and this is where we're going to start building again, guys. We want to get some gates on these. Okay. We want to save room and not have to use redstone engines pop a gate on there okay and I believe if we put this set to um, which one is it inventory space items in inventory we have pipe now I think it's items in inventory then we have the energy pulse okay I believe that's the one that we use we'll have to test it out items in inventory energy pulse then what's that what that'll do is take the items out of this side of the centrifuge pump it into this iron pipe which is then going to send things along to this diamond transport pipe okay now this one we need to set up still and this is sort of a trial and error thing we know we're gonna get beeswax out of it we know we're gonna get honey drops out of it um, tiny piles of copper dust shoot I don't have enough to set this up I thought I did bauxite um, aluminum I forgot that that's a byproduct of the bauxite dust which is kinda cool tin 
and we have iron. If we ever do get to do iron, then we'll put that in as well. Um, we may have propolis at some point and honey do, but I don't see any of that right now. Maybe we have some down here, possibly. Do we have any honey do down here? Yeah, honey do. Oh, and there's sugar and wow, there's a lot of stuff. Magic wax. All right, that should do for now. For the stuff that's going to be coming through here from our centrifuge, the blue line is going to be our magic wax, our honey drop, our beeswax, our honeydew, our propolis, and sugar. I think that should take care of that. The yellow line then will be our uh, copper dust, our bauxite dust, aluminum dust, tin dust, and I don't have enough avenues set up for all this dust. Okay. Um, okay. You know what? We may have to hold off on this. For the time being, let's go ahead and route the bauxite dust this way and the aluminum dust that way as well. Or no, we'll do aluminum this way. Uh, copper, aluminum, and tin for the time being is what will go yellow. All right. Now down here, we've got one, two. And let's see. We need uh, one here. Where's those stone pipes? Let's go ahead and put these guys back in here. We need our stone transport pipes. Where do they go, guys? They have to make some. I swore we had some. Stone transport pipes. Nope, let's make some. Oh, they're in our inventory. Almost pulled a boner there, guys. <laughs> we got it, though. Uh, all right. Uh, what else didn't we need? We don't need these two items. Okay. So this is going to be stone. St actually, messed up. We don't want items going in there, so this is going to be iron. And let's uh, let's get our wrench here, because we only want items coming one way, which is this way. Bust that up. We'll do cobble in the middle. Nope. We'll do stone in the middle, and we'll do cobble over here. Now, eventually. I can do another diamond pipe here and another one there. We can have five lines going, but for the time being, I don't, I don't want to do all that. And we actually don't have enough gates to get all of them running. Um, we may have to make some redstone engines for the time being, just because uh, those gates take forever <laughs> to get done. So let's go ahead and pop these one, two, three in a row. And actually, I guess we can do the fourth like that. So let's say blue, all right, is going to be our aluminum. Yellow will be our copper. And actually, let's do these as we go. So blue, we've got four of those guys, and it's going to make an aluminum dust. Um, going to have, what do we say, copper, I think we said here, right? Copper is yellow. Let's double check that. Yep. Red is going to be tin. And we actually don't have enough tiny piles of tin yet. We need one more there. And then the fifth one will be bauxite. And if we ever get iron, it will be on the very end. Actually, you know what? Why waste time now? Let's just do it. We've got one diamond pipe left. We're actually going to need another one. But throw oh there we go throw our diamond pipe down and do a uh, stone here and let's take this oh we need to take this back out no we have one of those we need one of these out so yellow and red like that and that should take care of it 
I need one more of those guys, and that's still set up. Perfect. Okay. So, throw that in there. The only thing else that we need to do now is figure, do we want to have these actually smelted? Or do we just want to have them deposited into a chest somewhere? I don't know, right here. That's something that we'll have to figure out, guys. I don't know. Um, for the time being, well, you know, it would be really nice to have them. But I don't have the resources <laughs> ready to be able to have those um, smelted right now. So for the time being, I think what we'll do is we'll just do this. And maybe throw a chest right... Oh, I thought I had a chest on me. Throw a chest right down there. For the time being, guys. Like I said, I want to fire this up. And um, these are all going to have to be iron. Well, that one... Eh, you know what? Yeah, they're all going to have to be iron pipes. So, metal note, guys. Iron pipes here. Because they have to... Uh, we have to ensure that they're going the right direction. All right, guys. So we've got our iron pipe set up. And um, for the time being, let's just throw two of these gates on. Which ones do we have? We have aluminum. Not worried about aluminum. Copper. We'll throw one on the copper. And this is the tin. Yeah, we'll throw one on the tin. Set these up to say if the pipe's empty, energy pulse. If the pipe is empty, er, actually, let's, I think it's this. Uh, we may have to uh, double check this one. Pipe empty, pipe empty. That might be another one. These gates are all new to me, guys, so I apologize if I'm screwing them all up. But uh, I think that should do it. So let's go ahead and test this bad boy out. Do we have anything in here? No, we don't as of right now. Let's go ahead and flick the switch. Both our engines are running. We had almost a full bat box here. Let's see, are these guys getting power? Oh, otherworldly. I guess there was something in these. Let's see. I'm not seeing the items go through the pipes for some reason. Oh, there we go. Check it out. There's the otherworldly stuff. And all that should be going into this chest. Now, another thing is I, I will probably replace all this piping with gold piping. But my gold supply is extremely low right now. So let's, uh, let's sort of kick it up a notch guys and we'll throw in these and let's just throw those two in for the time being and see how it processes all right So I think that's going to do it. Um, proof is in the pudding, guys. Check out all the items coming through here. The only problem is, uh, we know the gates are set up right, but the only problem is these engines are running super low because we are super low on power, guys. Um, Ten water mills are not going to cut it, so that's something we're going to have to work on in the future. And what I'll do is uh, I'll just do some math and see what centrifuges need to run, uh, how much electrical engine outputs for those centrifuges, uh, stuff like that to, to make things interesting. But we got this huge waterway, so next thing will, will be to move. I'll put 10 that way and then maybe 10 that way. Um, connect them with the with a little array of battery boxes, then it'll be all good. We'll, we'll take care of that using water mills. Uh, you know I'm a huge fan of that, guys. Um, so that's the power source. Let's check out down here, actually. We forgot to peep this out. There we go. And those are going out. Perfect. 
Copper dust in there from our copper. Couldn't be happier, guys. So, I want to thank you guys again for checking me out. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, learned a little bit. I learned a lot. Really excited about this setup and putting this one together. Uh, redoing the beehive base. A uh, lot more plans to do uh, out here still. We want to we want to uh, make these things as profitable as possible. So, uh, upcoming episode, look out for me improving the uh, frames and actually uh, making frames automatically up in this area and trying to load the AP. So that's going to do it, guys. I appreciate everything you guys done support-wise. If you liked the episode, feel free to give me a like, and I will check you guys all in the next episode. We'll see ya.